too. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the latest episode of All on the Table, uh, brought to you by uh, GameItAll.com, your one stop for all your gaming and entertainment news and, and stories. Uh, we are now officially sponsored by the wonderful folks at Comic Hunter, uh, ComicHunter.net, for all of your for some wonderful deals on Magic the Gathering singles, back issues of comics. They have an extensive collection, and uh, they're all around. Just one of the best uh, hobby stores I've ever been to. Nice uh, guys too. Oh, great, great crew, great crew. Except for Matt, you're an asshole, Matt. Uh, don't talk about Matt that way. I like Matt. That's cool. Me and Matt have a common love for gin. <laughs> so, gin, bringing people um, together. I'd also want to give a shout out to uh, my friends at the Houston by Night chat. Last week we talked about the uh, World of Darkness, and I mentioned the unmod chat chat room. But this week I want to mention Houston by Night. It's brand new. It just started. It's for uh, online role playing. Uh, it's at Houston by Night dot com. Uh, they're just starting out, so you can get some cool characters off the ground floor. Get some and, signing up for. Yeah, you should. It's great. It's uh, I, I know them personally, and uh, they've been trying to recruit me as a DM. <laughs> so, uh, who knows? I might have some spare time. If I have some spare time, I might do something. Uh, so, uh, yeah. Uh, other than that, today we will be talking about, uh, to continue with uh, Game It All's wonderful theme this month of uh, Games from the Crypt. Reviews from the Crypt. I forget. Is that what it's called? I forget. Anyways, it's... Reviews from the Crypt. Reviews from the Crypt. It's about uh, all horror, old horror games, or classic horror games. This week's theme is will be a special category of games called Tile Placement Games. Uh, unlike no. normal board games, Tile Placement Games are played by you uh, placing down a piece of the board every turn. So you build your own game board, and it gives you tons of replayability because you're technically never going to play the same game twice. It would take you forever to do it with any decent tile building game. So the first game we're going to talk about tonight is uh, probably the most simplistic of the one of the two we're going to talk about. Uh, the game is called Zombies. Zombies. Right Zombies. Nice little game. Um, it's uh, surprisingly inexpensive considering what you get in it. Very inexpensive. There's a ton of these. Uh, two to six players. Uh, recommended ages 15 and up. Uh, that's because there's a lot of gore in the in the materials, and mm -hmm. you know it deals with a bit of a mature subject matter. Um, now, uh, how you play the game is uh, your people who are trying to survive a sudden zombie apocalypse in your city. So you all start at Town Square, which is like a card with a fountain on it, and everyone's on that tile. And then whoever goes first picks a tile from the stack, flips it over, and places it at the exit of any uh, any of the exits of the previous tile. Then that tile will have uh, a stat on it that will tell you how many zombies it spawns, how many uh, ammo, ammo or, yeah. or items or health that it would spawn. Then the player has to move his character onto that tile, uh, kill some zombies by rolling a dice. You, know, you roll a six-sided die, and if you get a five or a six, three, five or six, right? five or six. a five or a six, you kill the zombie, <coughs> and you add them to your score. The game ends when you have killed 50 zombies, or if you reach what is called the helicopter tile, and it's a special tile with a helicopter on it, kill all the zombies on that tile and end your turn on it with no zombies on the tile. Signed up. Okay. So, that's how you win. Yep. There can be multiple winners if you make it. Yeah, if multiple people tile. make it to the helicopter tile, and they're, whoever's on the helicopter tile, by the time it's cleared, wins. They all win. Like, if, if the first person shows up, kills three of the nine zombies on there, next person shows up, kills two more, and then the last person sweeps the rest away, all the tiles are clear, all three of those people just won the game. Mm -hmm. But let's um, be honest, nobody ever wants to tie in that game. Why not? It's a zombie, you win. We always tend to work against each other. Oh. Every time I've played it. I, I don't try to fuck other people over, it just... It just conveniently happens. I try to save myself. True. If if 
if I have to, if someone has to die for me to live, it's well, not that's, gonna be me. that's the fucking game, right? That's zombies. That's how you play zombies. Um, now, some things I don't like about zombies. Uh, I don't like that you need to kill 50 zombies to win. That seems like over dramatic. It's excessive. Yeah. Uh, but it is in the rules. I just by cutting it in half, still 25 zombies is still a lot of zombies to kill because. If at some point your character dies, you have basically have infinite lives. If your character dies, you go back to the starting tile, back to the town square style, and half of the zombies you've killed return to the pool. So, you know, it, it sets you back quite a bit. I mean, if you're like, you're 24 zombies, you die. Down to 12. Or you're at 48 fucking zombies, which has mm -hmm. happened to me before. You die, you're back to 24. Um, but it's a ton of fun. Uh... It's, uh, a lot of people have their own house rules. Now, uh, Zombies is an incredibly popular game. Uh, so much so that there's roughly ten expansions for it. Uh, sometimes, like, every few little bit or so, I, I'm like, uh, go to the game store, look around, like, what the hell? Another Zombies expansion? What is this, like, 15? Um, <laughs> so each of the expansions adds a little, uh, twist to the zombie apocalypse. So the basic one is just a, a town, just a basic town with like a, uh, with like um, you know sporting goods stores and uh, fire stations and hospitals and things like that. Then you add the uh, then each expansion of the game adds a new twist. So the second expansion was called Zombie Core, and Zombie Core adds a military base and a new super zombie, which is like a, a special set of zombie uh, tokens. Uh, so like the zombie tokens are like this. They like they look like little a bunch of little army men, but they're zombie shaped. Yeah. Uh, pretty detailed considering. Oh yeah, they're like the the sculpt on the figures is amazing. If you if you were any kind of talented painting, Cord. You, you could you could make them look great. Yeah. Um, and anyways, the super zombies can only be killed on six. So you know, really challenging. Mm -hmm. Um, now. Uh, I believe each character starts with three wounds? Yes, you start with three wounds. Uh, you start with three wounds and three bullets. You can have up to a maximum of five health and infinite bullets. So yeah. as many bullets as you pick up, you can... Uh, bullets let you add a plus one to whatever your, your roll is on the die when you shoot a zombie. And of course, when you're out of health, you die. Um, so, uh, actually, no, you know what? Uh, government zombies require a five or a six, so that means regular zombies is uh, four, five, or four, six. five or six. Fifty percent chance of killing. Yeah, which I mean, it's 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 pretty fair considering you have to kill fifty of them. And also, um, they also move two spaces instead of one every turn. Okay. They're called government zombies. Government zombies. I actually did not know that. Yeah. Government so enhanced. During Donald Trump. Government enhanced zombies. Oh, so, damn it. Yeah. Between John Trump uh, then, after that, there's the third expansion, Mall Walkers, which introduces a mall. And there's, like, air vents in the mall that you can move through, plus the stores. It, it, there's a bunch of cards that come with the game that you draw and you have in your hand, and they all have a bunch of bonuses. So, like, for example, hey, look, a shotgun. Target player gets a plus one to their next three combat rolls and put three bullet tokens on this item card and discard the tokens to track the shots. Or, your shoe's untied, divide target player's movement roll in half. So when you move in the game, you roll a d6, and you move that many spaces. So this really fucks somebody else over. This isn't so bad. Move any two zombies in play to any legal space, so you can take two zombies and put them anywhere else. Or, or, or even right like in front of you if you're close. Yeah, so after that, uh, each expansion adds some new stuff, like the military expansion adds military grade weaponry, and like a military jeep and things like that. And the mall expansion adds a whole bunch of stuff from the mall. Uh, so yeah, it's a, it's a nice little theme. And uh, the zombies in the Mall Walkers expansion are cheerleaders. The like, little valley girls. Yeah. So <laughs> Then there was uh, Zombies 3.5, which is a, an, uh, an expansion that's just cards. So it's a whole bunch of new cards to do things with. Uh, then there was Zombies for the End. Uh, it was originally a standalone game and an expansion to Zombie. It introduces Zombie Dogs, which is like... Uh, uh, they basically die easy, but they're harder to 
Uh, they die easy, but they don't spawn. There's always multiple of them that spawn, and they all attack at the same time. So, and but when they hit you, they take half damage, take half a heart or something like that. And it, it adds another type of zombie to the game. I haven't played. And the uh, engine. it also has a bit of a of an Evil Dead theme to it. There's uh, some of the cards have uh, are pieces of the Book of the Dead, and if you assemble so many of the cards in your hand and play them, uh, when you're in the cabin, you immediately win the game. You stop the zombie apocalypse. Um, yeah, and the the rest of it is like a forested mountain range and a cabin. Uh, then there was Zombies Five: School's Out Forever. Uh, it was adds it an Alice a Cooper expansion. No, it's a school. It's a university, <laughs> like a, a college. Yeah. Uh, it adds 32 new event cards and something called a Guts token, which is another mechanic. Uh, then there was Zombie 6, 6 feet under. Uh, the expansion lets you use subways and sewers. Uh, and there's new sewer rules that can be played with any set. Uh, then there's Zombie 6.66. Uh, Zombie 6.66 was fill in the blank. What it is, is it gives you a bunch of blank zombie cards and blank zombie tiles, and you can build your own. So you can write your own card, your own special card. They're completely blank, and then you write what kind of effect you want. One of the cards yeah. I made was called Supernatural Influence, and it was basically when you play it, you exchanged all the zombies on one tile with the, all the zombies on another tile. You just traded them, and but the, it had to be a tile with zombies on it. So you could like treat all the zombies that were on one tile onto a blank tile and then leave that one blank. There had to be at least on one more zombie on the other tile. That's fair. And uh, it was pretty cool. Gives you some creativity. Yeah. Uh, I uh, was starting to create cards uh, based on the show Supernatural. So there was like a mm -hmm. Dean card, which was like an equipment card that you had. And basically, you had Dean accompanying you and he gave you a bonus and Bobby or Sam or whatever. Of course you want to equip Dean. Oh, fuck, man. I'm totally a Dean girl because Bobby's dead. Otherwise, it'd be all about That's Bobby. That's true. Uh, <laughs> Bobby's got that. So, so yeah, you can do that and uh, just, you know, customize zombies as you want. But then after that, zombies took a little bit of a break and started coming out with more expansions. Uh, zombie 7 is Send in the Clowns. So oh, it's a circus great. and zombie clowns. Uh, zombies 8 mm. is uh, Jailbreak, which is set in a jail, a penitentiary. Walking Dead um, guy. And uh, there's new uh, dodge rules and... Uh, it's also one of two expansions designed as an alternate starting location as opposed to the town square. Uh, then there's Zombies 9, Ashes to Ashes, which is a cemetery to be explored by the players and a crematorium. Um, if played on its own, the goal is to kill the last zombie on the board no matter what. There's no escaping. Then there's Zombies 10, also called Zombies X, Feeding the Addiction. Uh, it comes with new event cards and uh, the new add-on is the Addiction cards which when played gives you better abilities but also limits some so it's like steroids, drugs, okay. more medicines. Mm -hmm. Then there's Zombies 11, Death Incorporated. Um, it adds, um, the map is like a, an office building, corporate office building. And uh, it adds uh, pulling string cards where you've got CEOs and super zombies and things of the sort. Um, one zombie CEO it has introduces the new zombie CEO. Then after that, there's zombies twelve zombie zoo. Uh, basically, it has uh, zombie animals, which are six different figures: lions, tigers, polar bears, hyenas, monkeys, and gorillas. And I'm guessing each zombie does a different thing. I haven't played this one yet. Uh, then there's uh, zombies thirteen Defcon Z, uh, which was released in 2014 after a Kickstarter campaign. I'm assuming it's got to do with the space station, because Zombies 14 is called Space Bites. So it's a standalone game set in a space station. Unlike other expansions, all of the map tiles are set up prior to play beginning. So um, these are all parts of the... There's 14 expansions, technically 16, with you introduce the, the all-event card expansion and the blank expansion. So there's a lot to do in the Zombies universe. It oh, takes you all the way much, to fucking, I think. too much. All the way to fucking space, man. I feel like zombies is turning into the munchkin of its era, where it really <laughs> just needs to fucking stop. There's more, man. No, don't even. We there's don't know. there's three spinoffs. I don't give a shit. The humans game, where you play the zombies trying to kill the humans. The Martians game, which allows you to deal with a Martian invasion instead of zombies, but it can be played with zombies. 
And then there's another one called Medieval, which is basically kind of an Army of Darkness flavor to it. And it lets you uh, you kill skeletons in the medieval era. So it's not a modern day, it's a okay. medieval day. And it's See, skeletons that one I might actually zombies. find interesting. There have been two editions of zombies, and uh, a lot of them uh, are getting upgraded to the second edition. Mm-hmm. Um, it apparently has a soundtrack. Someone created a Midnight Syndicate. There's uh, a fucking zombie soundtrack. Created a soundtrack for you to play zombies too. Apparently, they also created a Dungeons and Dragons one. I actually kind of want to try that. And then, uh, and then the there's various uh, things you can buy for zombies, like the bags. Of, oh, so there's like bags of zombies, bags of zombie babes, bags of zombie dogs, yeah. bags of zombie clowns, glow in the darks. The glow in the darks actually interested me. I almost bought yeah. those. Uh, they each contain 100 figures each except the clowns, which are 50 per bag because the clowns are bigger, I guess. They're more detailed, too. Yeah. Um, all in all, Zombies is a fun little game uh, if you want to play something quick, uh, if you want to play something that doesn't require a lot of rules. I mean, I basically explain the whole damn thing. You flip over a tile, you roll a die, you move that many spaces. If you run into zombies, you kill them, you try to kill them. And then at the end of the turn, you roll a die, and that many zombies move one space. It's a good intro to tile placement games. That's the whole. That's the whole game. That's the yeah. whole game. That's how you play it. That's all the mechanics. Um, overall, I give it a nice, uh, solid three point five. It's fun. It's well designed. It's easy. Uh, it's accessible, but it's only so many times you can play it. I feel like we're almost being too lenient with most of our game ratings, so I'm going to let Phil be the more nice guy, and from now on I'm going to be the guy who, uh, who turns into an asshole and picks shit apart. So I'm actually going to give Zombies at like a 2. A 2. It's, it's not a bad game, that's not what I'm trying to say. Um, it's worth it for the money just because the amount of... Uh, but if it's not a bad game, game why, why rate it as low as a 2? A 2 means that it has some serious A 2, problems. no. All a 2 means is that it's slightly below average. No, 1 means... 0 means it's worse. 1 is 0 sucks. means it's the, the worst. Yeah, like 1 means the game is bad. 2 means it has some serious faults, but it has potential. And 3 would be it's good. I think kind of is good, and I think it's well designed, which is why it's the point five. Well, that's how you feel. That's what I'm saying. I think it's well designed. I don't think it's good. You don't think it's a good game? So my problem with zombies is after I play it twice, I really don't ever want to pick it up again. I've played that game probably a total of ten times since I've owned it for the past like two and a half years. Because none of my gaming group ever wants to play it. They play, they've all tried it. They don't want to play it again. No, we tend not to want to either. Especially if we play by the actual rules. Like if you if you do what Phil said and you change the rules, which we haven't tried yet, I might actually try that. Yeah, like and lower the amount of zombies and stuff. That would actually be a lot more fun. I'm gonna tell you right now, if you're playing to fifty kills, fuck that game. It's gonna take all day. It does. It takes forever. It's ridiculous. Like, the game one claims guy that it takes roll. how long? We, we had a. Uh, it claims that it takes like a half an hour. I think. Yeah. There's no like, fucking way. We, we had one guy when we played. He went on a fucking roll, just plowed through zombies like. Crazy, like he was like he was at like forty five, and, and he went on like a twelve straight zombie kill streak, like, and then it was like, and then he died. <laughs> you know what? The game doesn't even want to tell you how long it usually takes. But I remember somebody telling me. I think it was maybe on the board game website, Board Game Geek or whatever. Anyway, somebody had said it was like a half an hour, forty five minute game. Bullshit. If you're going for fifty kills, you're gonna be playing this for hours. Yeah, um, you just are. We actually have. Uh, the first four expansions ourselves. I'll give it a 2.5. I'll say that it's a mediocre game. Alright, fine. Mediocre. See, I, 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 I used five. to think the I ratings think, were a lot different. I think it's a it good game. Luke. I think it's got a good game, but it's... Or fly. But it's got, like... It's got some flaws, but it's, it's a good game overall. I think it's Sly good. Sly gave me a good... So, because I do the video game reviews for you guys, I game it all as well. Sly gave me a good uh, median for it, because I found that I was giving a lot of lower marks. I was getting like five point five sixes and stuff, and he said, "Yeah, but you're still saying that that game is above average." So that might seem like a low mark out of ten, but it's really not because you're still saying that the game is above the average score. You well, need I'm to think that out. five would be your average game. So, so I'm supposed to score it out of ten? Is what you're saying? So no, no, no. But out of five, so two point five would be an average game. I feel like this is not a bad game, but it's not a good game. I feel it's well, average. I, I think it's a good game with exactly. a few flaws. Flaws that can be easily fixed by house rules. That's it. Now, add house rules to the game. Easily 3.5. Easily. But if you're going to play it the way that they want you to play it, I'm going to have to give it 2.5. I don't want to spend two hours playing that type of game. When I can spend even less time playing this one, 
And this one has a lot more content to it than that does. And it's better. So much better. <laughs> so I'm going to start by saying I'm fucking super biased about this next game. <laughs> Um, <laughs> the next game we're going to talk about uh, in our towel placement saga is Betrayal at House on the Hill. My favorite game of all time. Betrayal at House on the Hill is like about a ten-year-old game. Yeah, give or take. I think the original game came out. Original game. Oh, it's, it's a yeah. second edition. The, the, we, we played this the second is, edition yeah. of it. Uh, I almost we'll put it this way: this one came out in 2010. Fuck. The second edition came out 2004. 2004. Yeah. So yeah, it's 12 years old. Yeah. Betrayal at House on the Hill is a 12-year-old game, but. My God, is it incredible! Uh, basically, Check. you are a, a group of people. Uh, I think it's up to eight players or seven players. Six, six. Is it six? Yeah. Six. I don't. I don't know what the expansion. though. I haven't seen the expansion. Well, yet. no, I haven't either. We, if we're only getting it tomorrow or Friday. I'm so fucking excited to see that. I'm gonna run that for Sunday, Saturday, by the way. Saturday night. I can't. Fucking Logan's birthday party. Saturday, oh, Saturday night? night. What time? I don't know. What's good? Whatever time. We'll figure it out. What's good? Logan's be up by eight, so I can be there by like eight thirty. Yeah. Alright, just we'll mess around at Facebook. We'll run in at 9. Yep, 9, o'clock, 9 o'clock, o'clock is the time I'm you giving you. You fucking know I'm in with this game. Jesus 9 Christ. 9 o'clock is the time I'm giving you. If the expansion comes, because Remy said it well, might not it. be in Friday. But if it's in if it's in Thursday or Friday, I'm fucking running it on Saturday night. So basically Forward what we're saying forward. is we will at least touch on it next week, how the expansion was. Yeah, oh, definitely. So uh, the basic game for Betrayal of House on the Hill. So you are six people, yep. and uh, you are, you, it's two to six. You can play more than, you can play less than six people. We yeah. played with five and four, and it works out fine. So you're inside this haunted house, this weird house. Um, you start in the... Uh, three to six. Three to six. Must be three. All right. The only reason I checked is because uh, there are certain scenarios that if you had two, there's no way it would work. Okay. So three to six. Now, uh, what it is, is you start in the uh, foyer, uh, the uh, entrance to the house, and you can choose to go on one of three floors. The basement, the first floor, and the upper floor. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, the expansion is supposed to add an attic. Which I'm actually kind of excited about. Yeah. Which is funny, though, because there's actually an attic tile card already in the game. Yeah. So I'm wondering if you'll need that to actually lead to the attic attic. Maybe. That'd be interesting, Jeremy. Maybe. Maybe. God, I can't um, <laughs> So uh, yeah, it'll add the, uh, the or, or the or the ceiling t- or the uh, upper floor tile. Now, uh, when you go somewhere, you uh, flip over one of the tiles from the stack of tiles that match what floor you're on. Then you play it, and one of three things happens: either a haunt, an item, or an omen. Uh, the the haunt is a, a little spiral symbol. The item is kind of like a, a weird. A uh, bold symbol, and the uh, haunt is a crow. What? Okay, so it's actually, and I apologize. I'm just we're learning this as we go, right? So the expansion is adding the roof mm-hmm. instead of the attic. So it's actually the roof. Okay. Twenty new game tiles, fifty new haunts. Well, yeah, because it's it's using the old stuff to generate the haunts, right? But I'm saying so. There's fifty new plus the fifty that you already have. Yeah, there's gonna be a hundred fucking haunts. Yeah, it's fantastic. You can play the replay game. value literally just fucking doubled in this game. You can, you can play it forever. And the expansion was, what, like? It's 30 bucks. 30 bucks? Zilla's selling it for 30. Yeah, I know. It's it's so reasonably priced. It's so good. What the fuck? Alright, let's let, stop Sorry. talking Dean's dick for a sec so we can I talk. can't! So much game dick! <laughs> Anyways, um, <laughs> so uh, you go in that room and one of those three events happen, and you flip over the card corresponding. So, uh, omen cards are generally uh, something creepy has occurred. Like um, They're usually pretty good. They yeah. give you a benefit, but they're also the reason that the game is fucking roll. wonky. Usually you have to roll to get the benefit. Like you have to, They give you a target number most of the time, and you have to roll your dice. Your dice uh, are either your are dice six-sided cool. dice that have either a blank, uh, a one, or a two on them. Yep, there's two of each. And there's two of each on each die. And, uh, like, let's say your number is, like, a three or higher, it says on the card, you roll the dice equal to the stat that you're rolling. There's four statistics in the game for every character. Yep. And you roll those dice. Strength, and speed, sanity, and knowledge. Knowledge. And you roll those dice uh, and are equal to the stat. So if you have, say it's a knowledge roll, and you have a three in knowledge, you roll three dice, and you hope to get three or more pips on the, on, on the die roll. Mm-hmm. So if you succeed, you get whatever the benefit is. If you fail, you get nothing. Uh, that's when an omen card happens. 
Uh, if you land in a room with an item, then you pick an item from the item card. And these are weird mystical objects, weird, uh, maybe sometimes just standard weaponry. So, like, this magical spear that deals two extra damage when you deal damage. Uh, Thanks. Uh, a ring, a magic, a magic ring that lets you shoot mind bullets, so you deal damage with your yep. your knowledge instead of your strength. The blood dagger, or the blood dagger, or uh, uh, if you use the blood dagger, you get like I think it's three extra die, but you lose health every time you use it. Yeah, or or things like that. Uh, and then finally, there's the haunt. Now the haunt nope. is something. The, see, that's where we mixed it up. The, the omen, event the cards omen. are the ones that you roll for. So yeah. the event cards are the first cards. Those are the ones that you roll for because yeah. an event happens in the room. The omen is what you're thinking. Those are the haunt cards. You yeah, know. yeah, the, the omen. Now the omen card is it's the one with the crow on it. Over. Uh, when you flip over an omen card, uh, they're all it's good something items. really terrifying that happens. Something big, something mm-hmm. game altering happens. Then uh, when you roll an omen card, you have to at the end of your turn you roll the dice. Uh, and you, you have to get a number equal to or higher. Is it all eight die? No. Six die, right? Six dice. Six and you, die. you roll the six dice, and you have to get... A, no, you roll dice equal to the number of players. Really? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I've never fucking played it that way. I'm not saying you're wrong. I've never played it that way. Yeah, you roll a certain number of dice, well, I'm an asshole. and you have to get equal or higher than the number of omen cards that are in play. So if there's just one omen card in play, then you only need to roll one or better. Which is good. If there's six omen cards in play, you have to get a seven, a six or better. Six, seven, or eight. Which means you're fucked. Which means you're probably going to trigger... No, just you roll six. Is it six? Just yeah. six? Alright. So, let's say you fail to roll the haunt roll off of the omens. Boom. Then you trigger the haunt. So, based on what room tile you flipped over, mm-hmm. and what omen card triggered it, mm-hmm. you then choose a random scenario from the scenario book. And the haunt begins. Some it, The game is called... Probably can't see it from this. There's a huge it's chart. a huge chart of 50 different haunts that can take place. Now, the game is called Betrayal at House on the Hill for a very good reason. <laughs> because it turns out that one of the players is, an asshole. is evil, or betrays the rest of the group. And the different haunts tell you how they did it. Either they've been preparing you to be killed by a crazed axe murderer that's kind of like Jason. Yep. Or... The alien one sucks dick. Or, uh... One of your party is taken servant. over by an alien, uh... Like, mind bender and fucking just starts murdering everybody in that. There, or there's... Uh, or you're the servant of a vampire lord who's taken up in the house and you've brought them their meal. Yeah. Or have you ever played the bride one yet? Um, I think so. The haunted brides end up. Uh, you she she believes that one of your party is essentially her long lost husband, and she comes after you specifically. She only has to kill that one person to win. Just to kill that person and bring him back to the altar to marry him to win. Problem is she can fucking go through walls and your players cannot. <laughs> um. And anyways, Not so fun. so the player who triggers the haunt, the person who becomes the traitor, he has his own win condition, mm-hmm. and the players have their own win condition. You each get separate books. The players have to read their book together, and the other, and the has other to guy goes in another room, room, and he reads his book, and then he has a set of rules that alter the flow of the game for him mm-hmm. or her, and the players have a set of rules that alter the flow. Usually there's about... You have ten turns, or twelve turns. Yeah, usually to, to it's between pretty 10 much and 12. to pretty much either beat the haunt or get beaten by the haunt. So, and this is the only downside to betrayal. This is my favorite game. I will suck its dick for the rest of my life. But there is one minor downside. If you have really fucking unlucky rolls, you can pop the haunt before you have enough of the house revealed to not die. Yeah, we've so done it only once. We popped it after the second fucking omen. We got wiped out because we didn't even have the main floor with more than like 15 tiles. We had nothing upstairs or downstairs yet. We just got fucked. Yeah, it can happen. It can happen, but that's the game, right? That's it. That's the game. Uh, One thing that I hate about it is sometimes there's like one person who gets geared all to fuck and then he's got like the the magic ring and the spear and the armor and a companion. And then they turn out to be the asshole. And then it's like either they're the traitor, either they're the traitor or... You're the traitor, and, and, just and you're like, like, oh, fuck, they're going to destroy me. And yeah. they do. Um, 
I can agree. It's very easy to overpower in this game. Not to mention the fact that you can actually pass people items. Yeah, you can trade items. Um, if you get the square. dog, you can get the dog to go run and get you a fucking item and come back. Yeah, stuff like that. So the game has a lot of depth, a mm -hmm. lot of uh, playability, a lot of uh, a fun stuff to do. Um, there's a great app out for it, and it's free. Yep. And the app basically gives you access to all the character tiles, so you can have your character right in front of you instead of putting it... Like, there's an awkward little tile for your characters, and there's these little black clips that you're supposed to put there to indicate what your stat is. That don't and stick th to the fucking... That's exactly. They don't stick well to the... In first they edition, they did... Yeah, they don't clip well onto the character tile. They just you know what we use? We use paper clips. Yeah. Well, a lot of people said if you use like a little piece of black uh, electrical tape um, just on the edge of it and then put the thing on, it sticks perfectly. But you shouldn't have to do that. When a game comes out, first edition, it was perfect. And then they went and changed it for second edition for the dynamic of it. Literally, if you nudge the table, all of the black clips fall off of your character. It's and true. you have no idea where the hell the stats were. It, it's true. It's very difficult to keep track of. I will say, the app is a godsend. The, the, the app is fantastic. It even has a dice roller on it, so you can just roll the dice, and if you don't, yeah. you know, instead of passing the dice around. Um, For anybody who has kids that again, don't Again, if you don't have the apps, honestly, paper clips work amazing. Yep. Like, we use paper clips. It'll warp your, your tile, your character tile a bit, but who cares? You can buy more of them, actually. You can even order a set of the characters. Now, um, there are six players, but there are 12 characters. Yeah. How that works is each tile, character tile, is two-sided. Mm -hmm. And each side is a different character that you can play. So if you're the red player, you can either be uh, the jock, the... the, the brick the, shithouse? The, or the brick shithouse. Jock or the, or the super fast track star. Yeah. Um, if you're the but your uh, mental traits you get, are fairly low. If you get the white white tile, you can either be the professor on one side or the priest on the other side. Mm -hmm. If you get the uh, the the, I think it's uh, the purple tile is the, the purple psychic tile is the psychic chick or the the psychic chick. Or oh no, sorry, that's the blue. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Madame Zelstra is the blue. Yeah, the the blue is like the psychic chick or the or that. some the housewife. I think. Nobody ever fucking plays the other side. Like, there's certain tiles you'll realize once you start playing. Oh my god, no, no, like, like everybody plays. It, it might be fun. cool to play the big burly jock, but trust me, speed in this game is fucking king. So you'll always play the the flash. You'll always play the speed guy. Her other side is Vivian Lopez. Yeah, she's like a housewife. She's like a housewife? They actually give you their age, their height, their weight, their hobbies, and their birthday. Which, birthday is actually important, because the way yeah. that this game works... Whoever's birthday, whoever's birthday is, is closest, closest to today. Or the day that you're playing. Yeah, whoever's... Whatever character's birthday is closest to whatever day you're playing is the person who will go first. Mm -hmm. So, uh, let me see them. And there are also two little kids in the game. For yeah. fuck's sakes, if you don't have to use them, don't. They, sometimes it gets really creepy. So low. But the kids get really creepy when you flip a certain hog. Well, like especially if they are the bad ones. Yeah, if they're the bad guy. So, like, the kid... The Do you kid, really want to murder a I don't child? Know, the kid's sanity is a four, and his, his might's a four. They have the most average of the stats. Yeah. Like, okay, so there's a little kid who loves computers, camping, and hockey. And then the other 12-year-old kid loves bugs and baseball. See, that's uh, a normal twelve. Bugs and basketball. Um, then there's the, the professor... Or the priest. Let's be completely honest, though. Whenever you play this game, everybody wants to be red or white. The big jock or the fast jock. Mm -hmm. uh, then there's the um, housewife or the uh, the um, straight A student. Then the little girl is either a little girly girl who likes dolls and music. Or uh, a really accomplished girl who likes swimming and medicine, and then finally there's uh, the uh, the kind of country girl who likes old movies and horses, or the psychic who likes astrology, cooking, and baseball. But anyways, uh, everybody them, wants to be red and white. Each of them have different strengths and weaknesses. Each of them have different stats, and that's how you decide what you play. Mm -hmm. um, so two people can't be both blue. One person has to be choose which blue side they are. It gives the game a little bit of balance. There's probably new characters in the expansion. I'm, I'm hoping. I'm not gonna lie. I'm, I'm hoping. Yeah, it'd be cool. Just because I'm assuming that the expansion. I just want more of everything. Well, actually, to be honest with you, it just told me what's in the expansion. I, I just want more of everything in the expansion. Uh, well, I, it didn't show any characters, but it showed more of a lot of fucking things. Huh. 
Well, if there's 15 new haunts, there has to be at least everything in the game again. You know what I mean? Why did... Anyways, I typed House on Haunted Hill on mistake. It's Betrayal on the House. <laughs> betrayal at the House The movie on the came hill. up, I'm like, what the fuck? That's not the board game. Oh, I know what yeah, that is. Betrayal at the House on the Hill is what it's called. Fucking phenomenal. So the expansion contains... Dun, 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 20 new room tiles, 30 new cards, and 50 new haunts. So it's not actually saying that they're going to be extending the amount of players or any additional players. However... Keep in mind, this is all that they're showing on the Wikipedia itself because the expansion only came live, I think, like last a week, week ago. Last week, yep. Yeah. It came out last Wednesday. I so think. we won't truly know until we actually open up the package. Yeah, which I'm looking forward to. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Betrayal at House on the Hill is a fantastic fucking game. Like, it is good. It hits on all cylinders. It can seem a bit reedy at first. Like, like it's like there's a, a bit of instructions to deal with. Yep. Oh, there's a shit ton of reading the whole game. Some players don't like the betrayal aspect, uh, but it really has a mass appeal. There's quite a few people... Um, I have a friend of mine, his girlfriend wasn't into gaming at all, at all, at all, at all. She never played anything. And then he came over with her one day, and we were like, we're going to play a game of betrayal. Do you want to play? And then she's like... Well, like, I'll try, because, you know, she didn't want to be left out. Yeah. The next week, after she had fun playing Betrayal, she, they are now, they now buy a new board game every week. They play all the time. They're inviting us over. They'll probably be over at our place Saturday to play. It's Andrew. Is that the one that I was talking to about the possible game tree? Yeah. Andrew. Yeah. Good guy. Yeah. And, um, this is the very first board game I ever played. Well, other than, like, Monopoly and shit, but this is the very first modern board game I've ever played. Um, it's great. The yep. replay value, there's 50 different possibilities. Now there's 50, 50 haunts. So there's 50 different scenarios for the game. And some of them actually do have the group working together. Yeah, some Not of them... Not many, there's, like, there's, three. There's, like, three of them that don't have a traitor. Yeah. So it's basically the haunt versus you. Uh, mm -hmm. Those are a lot of fun. Uh, one of them was, like, the house, the house The house is... The bottom of the house is starting to sink into a bottomless pit, and every turn, a tile gets removed from the board, starting with the tiles in the basement. Yep. So you have to find... You did. You have to find a certain tile and find an object in that tile so you can get away. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's it's great. Um, lots of very intense, very, uh, very emotional... Um, the game is really good, really good at creating a creepy atmosphere. The haunts, the cards, they really read real creepiness, like a real... Um, the game doesn't screw you over all the time. It does help you a lot. You know, you'll find a magic item or something really cool will happen to you. Mm -hmm. um, it's not a game that one person's going to dominate every time. No, but that being said, it's not perfect. It's very, very good. It's pretty fucking close, but it's not perfect. I give it a 4.5. This will be the one and only game you will ever hear me say that I give a 5 out of 5. You just love it that much. Because for the simple faults, yes, there are faults to it. I'm not saying that it's perfect, but to me it is perfect. Because it is the one game that every single board game day I have, we have to play this game. I will not have a board game day at my house if we don't play this once. I won't. It I is played this game 50... At least 50 times in like the three years that I've owned it. At least. It's it's a lot of fun. It's a ton of fun. It's found, you can find it easy. Uh, so like I'd give it a 4.5 for an actual rating scale, but for my personal rating, it's a 5. Yeah. Um, and the expansion just came out. There's a new expansion that just came out after fucking 12 years. It may be a 6 out of 5. We'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Betrayal of House on the Hill is a great game. I highly recommend anyone to buy it. Like, it's, it's, it's relatively. It is a must buy. Like it is. It is a must buy. Sixty bucks. Uh, roughly. Yeah, it's uh, not that expensive. Considering it's, it's, it's got it's got minis. It's got the dice. It's for got the cards, fucking it's got tiles, for the it's fucking got... replay value. Yeah. And the quality of the game. You're you're getting a deal if it was sixty bucks. Well, like I said I played it like fifty times, and I I guarantee I've probably only played like twenty five of the haunts. I might have only played fifty percent of them. I know. It's all luck. It's luck of the draw. I know for a fact I haven't been through all the haunts. Oh, no, no way. There's no way. There's no fucking I way. I flipped to one accidentally one day when I was looking for another one. I'm like, I've never even fucking seen this one. Oh, don't want to read it, though, because otherwise I'm going to know what's going on. Mm -hmm. Well, you can always read the player side. 
That's true. No, well, the no. play, yeah, because it doesn't matter if the other guy knows what the player side is. Yeah, the player does, because the villain's not supposed to know which rooms you're going to. Because if you need to go to specific rooms to do like knowledge checks and stuff, oh. if they know you're going to go there, they're just going to lay traps. So they're yeah, going to you. <laughs> it's not cheating if I accidentally found you. No, yeah, whatever. That's what Donald Trump would say. Mm. Drop. Please, please don't. Yeah. Please don't talk politics. We're not going there. We're not going there. Please. Betrayal. Betrayal at House on the Hill is fantastic. It's like, get it. Fucking get it. Go yeah. to your local game store. Fucking buy it now. I want to see every single person good. watching this right now ordering it from the comic country. It's it's that <laughs> fucking good. It's I want to see Remy ripping his hair up trying to order them. <laughs> it's that awesome. Uh, there are other games that are tile placement games, uh, but that are... There's some really popular ones, like a tra- uh, Forbidden Island? I don't remember. Or Treasure Island? I don't remember. I, I know a few others, like Carcassonne. Yeah? Carcassonne's a tile placement a game, but it's not horror-based. No. Uh, but it's good. Um... I can't think of others off the top of my head. There is a, there's Forbidden Island, Escape from Forbidden Island, stuff like that, which are, they're not horror themed either though, but they're like, uh, you're trying to escape from an island as the tiles are turning over and like killing everybody. You have to collect parts for a plane to rebuild the plane. And hmm. I've seen it a few times online and stuff. I've never actually played it. I'm not sure if it's any fun. Carcassonne is definitely fun. Yep. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So those are tile placement games. Uh, they're great, they're interactive, and their biggest strength is their replayability because you pretty much never play the same game twice. Yeah, the world's always changing. It's always it's always a different it's always a different scenario, always a different board. Very adaptable. Very adaptable. Um, so join us next week when we talk about when we talk about uh, crossover horror RPGs, uh, notably Deadlands, which is uh, one of my favorite RPGs, my favorite horror RPGs. It is another RPG I have not had the pleasure of playing, but I have done a lot of reading on, and holy shit, it's actually quite popular. Oh, it's so much For fun. something I hadn't heard of very much until you told me about it, it's very popular. It's so much fun. Uh, and you'll find out all about it next week, as we will be talking about all the different editions, and the, uh, also the uh, sister game to Deadlands called Doomtown. Doomtown. So, um, we'll see you next week. Uh, I'm Fatter Phil, and this is uh, Fat Adam. Adam. For uh, the Game It All website, uh, this is All on the Table, sponsored by the Comic Hunter at comichunter.net. Go visit it. Give them your money. Nah.